Welcome to the second year program. As I mentioned earlier, each year of the program has its priorities. If you'll remember in the first year of the program, we covered basic electricity, math, safety, and we did some rigging. Now in this second year of the program, we will go into detail on power. If you'll remember, in the first year of the program, we covered Ohm's Law, which dealt with three variables, voltage, current, and resistance. Now we're going to in introduce another variable into our circuits, and that's power. I will cover that. We will go through circuits. We'll go through series, parallel, combination circuits. We will deal with ratio and proportion, which is a basic form of algebra and highly important to the program. We will deal with voltage regulators. Then another area that's going to be of particular interest and high priority, and that's going to be in system voltages and transformer ratings. The second year of the program will prepare you for, for your transformer connections. Up to this time in your circuits, your DC circuits now, We've worked with Ohm's Law, and we know from Ohm's Law that we have three variables. We have voltage, we have current, and we have resistance. Now in the second year, first section, you deal with power. The definition of power, power is the rate at which work is being done. In our DC circuits, the only opposition to current flow we have is that in the form of resistance. When we get into alternating current, you'll see that we'll have another form of opposition to current flow. And that would be in the form of reactance. In other words, a changing magnetic field in an inductor or a capacitor is going to give us reactance. We'll deal with that when we come to it. Our unit of measure at this time for resistance, now just remember that that's, this is in watts. Now that amount of work done, we'll get into that more in detail later, but the amount of work done would be in watt hours. In other words, if we take power times hours, we would have watt hours, and that would be energy or that amount of work done. Now we have worked with Ohm's Law. We have isolated all the variables through our use of algebra. Now let's introduce another formula other than Ohm's Law and that is that is the basic power formula. The symbol for power now will be P. The basic power formula is P is equal to E times I. Now in Ohm's Law we had the formula E is equal to I times R. If you all remember when we worked with Ohm's Law we isolated all of the variables. In other words using algebra I can isolate also I and R. If I do that, I would have R then is equal to E divided by I. I would have I then is equal to E divided by R. Now I can do the same thing with our basic power formula. In other words, here we have a formula that states that our power is equal to our voltage times our current. If we want to isolate the same way we did in Ohm's Law, the different variables that we have for power, we would have then, if I divide I on both sides, I would have E then is equal to P divided by I. I would have I then is equal to P divided by, by E.
Now, up till now, we've dealt with two formulas. We've isolated each of the variables out of those formulas. We have two formulas. We have six equations. Now, with the basic power formula and what we know out of Ohm's law, we can come up with two more power formulas. To start with, we know that our power is equal to our volts times our amps. This is our basic power formula. Now what I'm going to do is substitute into this basic power formula what I know to be true out of Ohm's law. Now, in the basic power formula, we know that power is equal to the volts times the amps. In Ohm's law, I know the volts times, that, that, that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. That means then that I should be able to substitute out of Ohm's law what I know for voltage. Now, if I plug in to this formula, what I know to be true in Ohm's law, I'll have then instead of E, I'll have I times R. I'll have P then is equal to I times R times I. We can combine terms just as we did in our algebra. Then we know that P then is equal to I times I, which is I squared times R. So we have a new formula for power P then is equal to I squared R. Okay, now what we want to do, go back to the basic power formula again, substitute this time what we know for I to be true in Ohm's law. Then we'll have P then is equal to E times E over R. Now remember in our fractions, if we're multiplying fractions, we have to have complete fractions. So I'm going to take E, divide it by one. When I do that, now I'll multiply across the top and across the bottom like we did in the first year. We'll have E times E, which is E squared, over one times R, which is R. So we have a new power formula now. P then is equal to E squared over R. 